Head coach David Marsh is saying, hey, we're waiting for you guys to talk to some of our swimmers. Well, that may happen tonight as we take a look at the lane assignments for the last of the time finals of the men's 1,650 yard. And we've seen a couple already in a pretty big time set down by NC State's Ross Dant. There is Georgia Tech representative Mert Kilovich out of Turkey in lane one. Tyler Watson for the Florida Gators is in two. And then David Johnston of Texas. He'll be operating out of lane three. One of the real breakout stars at the SEC championships is this teenager, Levi Sandage of Kentucky. He won the mile there, first Kentucky Wildcat ever to win it. Here's Will Gallant from NC State. He will be a major threat for the Wolfpack National runner-up last year. Jake McGahee of Georgia finished fourth in this event last season at 14.33. He's in lane six. And the former Trojan now swimming for Alabama, Victor Johansson for the Crimson Tide. He is in seven. And from Arizona State, couple of Sun Devils here in this last heat to the 1650. Alan Sarkani. And Gallant and Johnson. There's a look at what Levi Sandage did earlier in the SEC championship. But Gallant and Johnson will be very game competitors here as we open things up in the final night. This is one time, and, and it's been almost 40 years since I've said that this legitimately, but the early seeded heat time by Ross Dant might just hold up. He went 1430.32. We will keep a very close eye on that because Patrick, that is now the fastest time in the country by over a second. And, and, and it's, Four and a half seconds over the second fastest time, and and, uh, and that's Will Gallant. Gallant's of NC State, Dan's teammate. He's in five. He and David Johnson had a great duel at the Phillips 66 National Championships, where Gallant ran him down over the final four or five hundred meters of that race. Johnson has already been on the podium this week here in Minneapolis. Finished runner-up to Kyle Hobson of Texas in the 500. And Johnson in lane three. A couple of top three finishers from that 500. McGahey also finished third in that event. So I, I, I give the slight edge just based on their 500 performance. I, I get it. It's a completely different race. But if you look at second for Johnson, third for McGahey, and then you look in the middle with Sandage and Gallant, they were 46th in the 500 and 12th in the 500. So again, it's over a thousand yards shorter, but they underperformed in those two events where Johnston and McGehee were solid. And Johnston's had a great meet thus far. It's three, this is perhaps the third top eight finish he's going to have. Well, Rowdy, you are an Olympic champion sprinter, so I will defer this next question to Elizabeth Beisel, who is on the deck. And Elizabeth, we had a chance to see Sandage really break out of the SECs last month. He dropped a ton of time. He's 18. What can we expect as far as time droppages from him and the other youngsters in this last time final. You know, I think for Levi, it's all going to boil down to how he can handle the pressure here at NC2As. SECs is a different beast, as is this meet. So if he can rise to the occasion, and that's hard to do as a freshman, because when you go into the NC2As, you have no idea what the energy is like, the intensity, the nerves. So, I mean, the smile is very long. I would not count Sandage out. But we're definitely going to keep an eye on the likes of David Johnson and everybody that we're talking about, Jake McGahee, um, that have maybe a little bit more experience under their belt. Uh, I, I think Johnson really wants this. Uh, I, I think this is a guy that's just been right there for the last two or three years. So close in so many ways. He's a great kid, great swimmer for Eddie Reese. Uh, had a great chance to talk to Eddie on the deck a few minutes ago. and. You know, Eddie and I go back, I, I told him, I said, you and I, I think may have been more NCAA championships than anybody here. I, I've been to 45 in a row now, except for the COVID year, obviously. And and he is the only one I think that's been to more than I have. Because, and he said, well, oh, I remember yours exactly. 1978 freshman year. And he started rattling off my times. And it was just so incredible to me that 
here 45 years ago, all the great champions he's had, and yet his memory is sharp as ever. Could have been a major league catcher. Photographic memories for a lot of those guys in the big leagues. Johnston in the lead in lane three for Texas, and as Roddy mentioned, fifth in this event last year, seventh a couple of years ago. And already we're technically seeing a little bit of a change as far as Sandage goes. When he won the SECs last month, I mean, he was out and he was forcing the entire pack to chase him down. They just never could. Uh, it, it, it certainly had concern for me, 46th in the 500. That, that, is, uh, that is not something that bodes well for a performance like this in the mile. Like Elizabeth said, a lot of pressure as a freshman as it is. And then to be the top qualifier on top of that, that, that's tough, tough to do, and to tough to come back. Here's the key part right here. 420, that's what Gant was. Now he's 417, looking really good. He's three seconds ahead of what Gant was at his 500 mark. The second place guy, Watson, from Florida, was right on Gant's pace at 420 plus. Elizabeth, with Dant going 14.30 in the previous heat, does that at all change the tactics of these swimmers in the final one? Yeah, I think they always have an eye on what's happening in the earlier heats, and they know, okay, we saw 14.30, this is what we need to do. But I think a lot of this race boils down to feel and the race strategy that they have. I mean, when I was swimming the mile, which wasn't really that often, and I wasn't the best, <laughs> But I would descend by 500. So first 500 is kind of easy speed. Second 500, you pick it up a bit. And then kind of the last 650, you're just going for it. And it looks like right now David Johnson is doing just that. What are you noticing from, say, the front four of this race so far? I like the way that David Johnson looks. And, it, you know, as we saw at the women's meet, it is way too early to call a race ever in the mile at this point. But he looks smooth. He's fresh off some really great swims earlier in the meet. And I think this is going to be finally his chance to stand on top of the podium as your number one champion. So at the 6.50, Johnson 536.95, about three and a half seconds up on Will Gallant of NC State in lane five. He's right now swimming in second place. Watson Sandage right now is fifth. Very consistent split wise. He's been 26, 2, 3, or 4 for the last seven or eight fifties alone. So there's no drop of each 50 from a consistency standpoint. Everybody else is in that 26, 9, 27 low. Real Gallon, who's running seconds, had a few 26 threes as well now, the last three or four 50s but he was sitting on 26, five and sixes for a while. So he's starting to inch up on a little bit. But again, if you look at, take a look back at Dan. At 630.1, Dan was 633. So right now, Johnson's running about three seconds ahead. But Dan, figuratively speaking, is running second. If you look at that, Look at that mile time. That's in the stratosphere. That's not going to be tough. Thinks 14-12. I mean, this splits 4-15. No, they're talking about 500. 4-15, 4-19, 4-21. This last 150 yards is 117. That's as fast as most of the 500 freestylers came back in their last 150 years. That will not be caught. So this is Johnson coming to the 850 wall. And Will Gallant again splitting 26-24, his last 50-26-31 there. He picks up a half second on yeah, Johnson. That, that's what I was just getting ready to say. He's actually out splitting Gallant, excuse me, Johnson now, by about a half a second, the last three 50s alone. So this would be huge. You've got to figure at this point, ah, NC State's going to finish at least second and third. That's the worst they can finish based on what I'm seeing here. The second place time in the preliminaries was Jack Hoagland, who won in an early heat. Again, Notre Dame having a great meet, the senior. He was 14.38. That's looking pretty good now for a top five finish. Charlie Clark was third at 14.41. So those three times right there from the earlier heats certainly will hold up to perhaps a top eight time 
at least scoring top 16. So those two are coming back at you on your screen. have kind of broken away from the field. They're about five and a half seconds clear of Sarkany of Arizona State in third. And Johnson's lead inside a second now over that. It's literally, I mean, almost to the 100. Exactly five, half a second, each 50, the last four 50s. That's what Gallon has been doing each one of these 50s. And he did it again. He's nosing ahead for the first time here on Johnston. He did it again. 844. Now let's go back and look at Dan. He was 846. So both of these guys are running about two seconds ahead of Dan. But I will say that Dan was really consistent throughout his swim. He was 26-4, 26-5. Oh, Rowdy, he picked up a full second on that 50. I, 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 I'm looking back at Dan splits, and we have to start comparing Gallant, 26-1 there. Dan was a 26-6, so... But I, Dan's, they've got to be at least 26-4s this, from this point forward to have a chance to beat Ross Dan in an earlier heat. This will be the 1,100-yard turn. And Gallant's lead now is a second and a half on Johnston. Tyler Watson in lane two for Florida flips third. Still two seconds ahead of that imaginary swimmer. About a body length behind him, and another body length behind Dan is David Johnston. So those are the three running now, this imaginary swimmer right here. <laughs> Elizabeth, let's bring you back in. How is the time up for Gallant compared to his teammate Dan in the previous heat? How is that being communicated to him as far as where he is and what he needs? Well, I don't actually have the results in front of me from the earlier heats, but I do love the way that Gallant looks and the fact that he does that training every single day with Dan. He knows that, all right, Dan had a really great swim. That means that I'm going to be set up for a really great swim myself. And like I said earlier, I mean, I thought Johnson looked really good, but now Gallon, this is probably part of his race strategy, knowing I'm going to make my move halfway through the race. And there is Dan right there cheering on his teammate, jumping up and down. Let's go. <laughs> he wants a one-two finish is what he wants. Well, we've seen this all weekend. You know, when your teammates, it doesn't matter. Trust me, all he's looking at is first place. He's not even paying attention to the clock. I would gather to bet he has no idea if he's ahead or behind <laughs> his own pace. All he sees out there is the number one that goes by Will Gallant's name every time he turns at the 50. But Rowdy, I mean, isn't this the epitome of college swimming right here? Yeah. The electricity and the cheering of sure. Dan from the sideline as his teammate Gallant goes by him, and maybe goes by him for the national championship as well. Patrick, it's the only meet in the world that I know of that has this kind of feel. Okay, the Olympics, obviously, because you have a Team USA or a Team uh, Germany or whatever, but this meet is just pure electricity when it comes to that team effort. Again, 11.23 he was, and that's still running two seconds ahead of his teammate. But right now, NC State is running 1-2 here in the mile. Inside 300 yards to go for Gallants at NC State. Jake McGahey now in the third place for Georgia. Johnson still hanging on the second. But this is now turning into a Gallant ceremony. Now it's just a race against the clock and against his teammate who set the top time about a half hour ago. Well, Gallant's going to end up finishing third unless this guy right there, McGahey, goes by him. He has great closing speed, but Regardless of how it shakes out the rest of the way, this guy right there and the guy we saw on the box just a couple of minutes ago are going to finish 1-2 for the Wolfpack. And again, over and over, we've talked about these great teams and how they've come to swim fast here. NC State is certainly one of them. 200 yards to go for Gallant. Junior from Collinsville, Connecticut, spent his first collegiate year with the Hoosiers and then transferred to NC State and won the mile at the ACC Championships last month. 2.2 seconds ahead of his teammate. He was 13-11, 13.09, and literally he's been two seconds ahead of him for about 700 yards. 
Can you imagine? We have to imagine this imaginary swimmer here, but <laughs> the practices these guys have day in and day out of going head to head, beating each other up in the water. So here comes Gallant to the wall, 100 yards to go at this turn, and he is at 13.36, Rowdy. Great race for second shaping up behind be, with McGahee and Johnson, but really it's a race for third. Right there, way in the back, you can see him about a half potty length behind. There's McGahee right there trying to run down Johnston. Again, that's going to be for third place. And the official behind lane five with a sound that Will Gallant has been dying to hear. <laughs> Makes the turn 50 yards to go away from a national championship. And the Wolfpack team in the right on the deck, they're going nuts. One, two for the Wolfpack. Dance time, 14.30.32. And here comes Will Gallant, runner-up last year, and he is now a national champion for the NC State Wolfpack in 14.28.84. McGahee touches second, 14.33. So that does oh mean God. Ross Dance of NC State We'll finish national runner up the Wolfpack, go one, two in the mile. And there's Ross Dant, the first person, the first guy to congratulate Will Gallant. How about that? How about that for teammates? He wants to help him out of the water. I saw this kid running across the deck. I couldn't quite grasp who it was, but then once we got a close up, that it is. was his teammate. That is Dan. What a shot. Will Gallant, his teammate, on the water. National champion, national runner up. What a moment for NC State. Wolfpack distance! I think Ross is more excited than. Yeah. And he, and he should be. He didn't just get through swimming 66 lengths. He did about an hour ago, but just not now. <laughs> that's great. That's just, that's, we don't need a replay on that one, partner. That's, that's the picture right there. Beautiful. So here are the results from this last time final. Heat 5, 14, 28, 94. Again, Dant came in at 14, 30, 32. So about a 1.3, 1.4 second win for Will Gallant, who is now the national champion. Jake McGahee, 14-33-82, second out of that heats. So NC State, which won a relay in NCAA record time earlier in the meet, have their first individual national champion of 2023. This is the second Wolfpack to ever win it, Anton Ibsen in 2018. And Will Gallant is on the deck with Elizabeth Weisel. Will's trying to put on his pants. <laughs> Will, what was the strategy coming in tonight? And did you ever imagine that you'd be able to go 1-2 with Ross in this 1650? Uh, I mean, the strategy was just to kind of take it as easy as I can in the first thousand and stay with him as much as I could and then you know, I'll give it all I had in the last 500. I kind of died a little bit, but I mean, Ross is there with me in practice every day, so uh, there's no doubt in my mind that we could have done that. Hey, Ross, when we're talking about practice, how much does this mean to you to share this moment with Will and to have two NC State Wolf Pack on the top two spots on the podium? Last year we went 2-3, and from the beginning of this year, I told Will we can go 1-2 in this event. This is something we both dreamed about every day in practice, pushing each other, and for it to happen like this is just incredible, and I'm so happy that I can be up there with one of my best friends, Will. Well, the training work, congratulations, boys. Well, storybook finish.